Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation for positive integers. We have x plus y plus z equals x, y, z, which is the product and x, y, z are all positive integers. Before we look at the positive integer cases, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation from a different perspective. I know some of you guys like complex numbers more than real numbers. So let's go ahead and take a look at the following. So if you just leave the x plus y on the left hand side, in other words, subtract z from both sides, then you're going to be getting x plus y equals x, y, z minus z. And then if you factor out a z here, you're going to get the following. And if you divide both sides by x, y minus 1, that's going to allow you to isolate z in terms of x and y. So we can write that z equals x plus y over x, y minus 1. So here we have two cases, right? First of all, this is true if x, y does not equal 1. But we now have to consider what happens if x, y equals 1. Obviously, if x, y does not equal 1, then we express z in terms of x and y. So by replacing x and y with something, we can find solutions. And there are infinitely many real solutions in this case because x and y can be replaced pretty much with anything as long as x, y does not equal 1. Now, what happens if, what happens if x, y equals 1? That's the tricky part. Let's take a look at that one. Okay, so if x, y is equal to 1, from this equation, I'm getting x plus y is equal to z times x, y minus 1, which is z times 0. So this gives us 0. So x plus y equals 0 means x equals negative y or y equals negative x. However you want to write it, we can just write it as y equals negative x. But at the same time, we also know that x, y is equal to 1. So we kind of like got a system here. Let's go ahead and solve the system. Let's replace y with negative x. That's going to give us negative x squared equals 1 or x squared equals negative 1 or x squared plus 1 equals 0. However you want to write it. But this tells you that we're not going to get real solutions from here if x, y equals 1. You're only going to be getting complex solutions. And in this case, x could be i or negative i. All right. So I just wanted to show you that in case, uh, you know, you want to look for complex options. And you can just isolate one of the variables and go from there or just solve the equation in general. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at integer solutions. And for those integer solutions, we're going to be using a different approach. And that approach is often used with these kinds of equations, especially the Diophantine equations. And sometimes people are confused about the fact that when we say without loss of generality, that basically means that whatever I assumed, you can also assume it with different variables. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. So that's what I'm going to do now. Without loss of generality, let's assume that Let's assume that x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to z. Now, obviously, you could do the same thing with y, z, x or z, y, x or whatever you want. Doesn't really matter. That's why we say without loss of generality. OK, so what does this imply? So you have something um, x, y, z, like three variables. And we are saying that they can be equal, but if they're different, then z is the largest, and then y is the next one, and x is the smallest. Suppose that they're all different at this point. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, you're, you're adding three different numbers, x plus y plus z, and that sum is always going to be less than or equal to the largest number multiplied by 3. Right? Can I safely say that? And if you don't see this, you can do something we've done before. You can say x is less than or equal to z, y is less than or equal to z, and obviously z is also less than or equal to z. And then you can add those up. But we can also look at it from a different perspective. If you add three different numbers, the sum is going to be always less than or equal to the largest number multiplied by 3. Why? Because even if you replace x and y with z, the largest you could get from here would be 3z. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Now, this is really cool because it kind of gives us an upper boundary. And since we already know that x plus y plus z is equal to x, y, z from here, we can replace x plus y plus z with x, y, z. Let's go ahead and do that. That gives us x, y, z 
is less than or equal to 3z. Okay? Now, what am I thinking? Well, I'm looking for positive integer solutions. So, z is a positive integer, x is a positive integer, y is a positive integer. That means I can divide both sides by z without any danger, right? Because in an inequality, you have to be careful what you're dividing or multiplying by. But in this case, since z is greater than 0, I can just divide both sides by z very easily. And that gives us a really nice inequality. I can't really tell you how nice this is. So this tells us x, y is less than or equal to 3. That's a really nice upper bound, right? Well, since x, y are both positive integers, their product is also going to be a positive integer, and that maximum it can be is 3. Therefore, the minimum it can be is 1. So let's go ahead and take a look at the minimum case, and we're going to build our case up. x, y is equal to 1. This implies that x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. And if you remember, our original equation was x plus y plus z is equal to x, y, z. Since we know that x and y are both 1, let's go ahead and substitute those here. 1, 1, z. So that's going to give me z plus 2. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to be getting z. But this is impossible, you know, right? Even with complex numbers or any type of number, is there any number that exists that is going to give you, uh, make this equation true? No, right? I mean, you're adding 2 to something and then it can't be true. So there are no solutions here. We can't really find anything from there. So x, y equals 1 doesn't really give us anything nice. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another case. Since x, y needs to be less than or equal to 3, the next one I'm going to check is x, y equals 2. From here, since I already assumed that x is less than or equal to y, I can j just say that x equals 1 and y equals 2 in this case. And z is supposed to be the largest, right? Let's go ahead and see if we can find the z value from here. So if you substitute x equals 1 and y equals 2, you're going to get z plus 3 equals 1 times 2 times z, which is 2z, 2z or not 2z. And from here, we get z equals 3. So it looks like this satisfies the inequality, and we got a valid solution. So what is that supposed to mean? x equals 1, y equals 2, and z equals 3 is going to give us a nice solution or order triple. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other case x, y equals 3. Now, if x, y equals 3, again, x is less than or equal to y, and 3 is a prime number, so we can say that x must be 1 and y must be 3. But if you substitute these values into the original problem, you're going to get z plus 4 is equal to 3z. From here, you're going to get 2z equals 4. 2z or not 2z, it doesn't work. z equals 2. Now, Notice that this looks like a nice ordered triple, but the problem is we assume that x is less than, less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to z. So this order triple does not satisfy what we want. But guess what? At the end, it's actually going to work. But let's just say for now that it didn't satisfy the original one. So the only solution we got from here is 1, 2, and 3. Now here's the thing. If 1, 2, 3 satisfy the original equation, all the permutations of this is also going to satisfy. Why? Because x, y, z are all interchangeable. Therefore, uh, our assumption didn't really matter because you could also do the same thing with z, y, x or any other permutation. Therefore, as a solution, this is what I'm going to write. I want to write it as a set. The solution to this equation is given by the set 1, 2, and 3, which means that x, y, z can be any of those numbers. As long as they're all distinct, we're going to be good. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.